Hi everyone, so uh, let's proceed to the last topic of Unit 1, which is uh, Topic 4, Knowing the Functions of Arts. So before we start, uh, gusto ko lang kayong kumusta yung lahat. Kumusta kayong lahat? Sana okay kayo. Uh, uh, sana huwag kayong tumigil, huwag kayong mapagod. Kahit nakakapagod talaga ngayon yung situation natin. Uh, yeah, sana hindi kayo mapagod na magsumikap. And gusto ko lang din sabihin na uh, if you feel tired, hopeless, depressed, or uh, may mga anxiety tayo, uh, always remember na there's always a light at the end of the darkness. And uh, the feeling you're feeling right now, it is not forever. So, yeah, uh, keep going, laban lang, kapit lang. So, at the end of the day, uh, one day you will look back and congratulate yourself na you did not give up. So, yeah, do not give up. So, may mga challenges, yes, pero marami pa mga opportunities for us to uh, be thankful and to seize our moment, seize our time, and to use our time wisely. Okay, so yeah. So at the end of this session, you will be able to discuss the different functions of art, demonstrate understanding how artists use images to represent idea, an idea, uh, realize the functions of some art forms in daily life. Okay, so before we proceed to the functions of art, uh, let's first read the article written by Frederick Horowitz. So more than you see, the many functions of art. Okay, so art has many different functions in human history. Each society defined its own purposes for art and produced an art suited to those purposes. So for ancient Romans, art served as a vehicle of propaganda. Their sculptures proclaimed victories their buildings highly praise the power of the state. Uh, in modern societies like our own, art serves different and sometimes contradictory purposes. So, in sinasabi ko na, one artist paints in order to communicate a message to his audience, while across the street, another paints in order to please himself. A third artist explores shapes and colors, and a fourth illustrates books. So, yung sinasabi ko na, art varies. Maraming types of arts. So, iba-iba rin tayo ng uh, reasons. Iba-iba rin ang reasons ng artist why they did that art. Okay. So, yeah. We have different preferences, different reasons behind, different stories behind, and different uh, skills. Kaya nakakreate ng maraming artworks. Different functions. Okay. Let's move to this one. Art functions as number one, an, aid, an agent of magic. Okay. So to ensure a successful hunt, perpetuate the soul after death, triumph over an enemy or cure diseases. So ito yung mga rituals noon. Yung mga sorcerers and so on and so forth. Next, we have an aid to meditation. So, pwede yan sa yung ginagawa nun ng mga rituals or meditation na yung parang nare-relax ka kapag nakikinig ka ng music or uh, na tumitingin ka sa isang painting. So, it is somehow an aid uh, to meditation. Next, we have an agent to ritual. So, yung sinasabi ko kanina. Next, a record of events. Uh, objects or situations. So, yan yung mga ating history, um, mga stories, yung mga novels, biographies, or ano ba ba? Yung mga movies na pinapanood natin, mga literature, literary pieces. So, yung mga record of events, mga objects or situations na nangyayari noong unang panahon and nangyayari ngayon. Next, we have a substitute for a real thing or a symbol. One example of this is Statues. So, yung mga statwa na yan, nag-represent sila ng mga heroes natin or yung mga kilalang tao. Okay. 
Yung mga, uh, sinisimbolize nilang heroism, sinisimbolize nilang kalayaan, and so on and so forth. Next, souvenir. Uh, next, we have propaganda to impress, persuade, or change thinking or behavior. So, one example of this is editorial cartooning. Di ba? So, yung mga cartoon na yan, yung mga simple drawing, sometimes uh, it is used to change our perspective of things. It is to change our behavior or to change our thinking. So, one example na nakita ko uh, recently lang, nakita ko ng editorial cartoon about online classes. And uh, may turtle sa gitna ng parang bangin siya. So, may dalawang ano dito. Tapos, nandyan yung parang bridge and bangin. Nandun yung turtle sa gitna. Sa taas ng turtle, nandun yung sudyante na nakalagay online learning. Ganyan. And dito sa side, uh, kamay na nagsisimbolize na tinutulak niya yung turtle. So, yung kamay na yun, yun yung ched or yung death head. Tinutulak niya tayo to push na, ipush through yung school year na to. And, uh, doon naman sa pinaka-front dito, uh, isang teacher na hinihila yung pagong, hinihila yung turtle. So, nakapatong dun sa pagong, yun nga yung estudyante na kahit anong, anong tulak sa atin ng DepEd at anong hila sa anong teacher, Minsan, kahit gusto yun ng estudyante, kung mabagal talaga yung internet connection, kasing bagal yung pagong, napakahirap talaga. So, yeah, it is to change our thinking or to change the thinking of the child to at least slow down or to change the thinking of the teachers na hindi pa hirapan yung mga estudyante or to change din the perspective of the students na uh, hindi lang students ang nahihirapan, nahihirapan din yung Mga teachers, nahihirapan din yung set. Mga ganon. Okay, so, yan. Art serves as uh, to impress, to persuade, to change our thinking or behavior. Next, we have communication of stories, ideas, events. So, yan yung mga literary pieces natin. So, mga novels, uh, dramas, and so on and so forth. Yung mga events, yan yung mga festivals. Yan. Next, an agent of social control. So, yun nga sinasabi ko kanina. Pwede mong makontrol ang society uh, with the use of a simple, yun nga, editorial cartoon. So, at least, somehow, parang nakokontrol mo yung thinking ng tao or parang napaparealize mo sa kanila. So, somewhat nakokontrol mo yung society through art. Next, we have amusement or entertainment. Yan yung ating mga music, uh, dance, ano pa ba? Uh, literary pieces, on so on Next, a mean of moral improvement. So, ito yung pag-change ng moral ng tao. So, mamaya um, discuss natin, meron isang writer, isang novelist, um, si Modesto de Castro. Nagsulat siya ng Code of Ethics. So, nandun yung Paano ba tayo mag-act as a uh, human being? Yeah. Next, we have education. Ito yung sa liberal arts. Yeah. Kung maalala nyo yun. Next, a means of self-expression. So, there's a self-explanatory. Self-revelation, release of emotions, exploration of vision. Itong apat na to, yan yung medyo very dominant na reason bakit nagka-create ng art ang isang artist. It is a self-expression, self-revelation, release of emotions, or exploration of vision. So, it can be painting, sculpture, music, liter literature, and so on and so forth. Next, a reflection and interpretation of life. So, yeah. Uh, pag once na nakatingin ka sa isang artwork, you reflect to it and na-interpret mo rin yung buhay mo doon. Next, an expression of beauty. So, for example, um, sunset. So, by painting it, you're expressing the beauty of God's creation. Ah, ganun. Next, we have decoration or embellishment. Yan, very self-explanatory. Next, money investment. So, maraming mga uh, tao na 
and tabi to mga uh, mga nagkumukuha sila ng art so parang collectors collectors ng mga artworks so investment yun eh so parang ang isang artwork kasi kung ginawa yan ngayong taon parang hindi pa siya masyadong uh, hindi pa na masyadong nakikita yung kahalagahan niya so habang tumatagal yun investment yun. So, pag collector ka, habang tumatagal, parang mas nagmamahal yung mga artworks na yun. For example, uh, yung lolo't lola mo, may mga artwork sila noon nagawa nila nung mga kabatch nila nung unang panahon. Nung unang panahon, hindi pa ganun kalaking impact noon. Pero pag ibebenta mo na siya ngayon, napakamahal na. So, yun yung sinasabi na uh, artworks are sometimes a form of investment or monetary investment. Next, a status symbol. So, ito yung mga, napag-usapan din natin yun sa 3D art, di ba yung architecture? So, status. Through uh, houses, makikita mo yung status ng tao. If mayaman ba siya, or, yeah, or nandun siya sa middle class, mga ganun. So, dahil sa mga, uh, artwork na nakikita mo sa sa kanyang katawan or sa kanilang bahay, makikita mo yung status nila. So, for example, nakakita ka ng tao na uh, puta ka sa bahay nila and marami mga pieces na mga gold. Diba? Yung mga, mga, mga statues na mga gawa sa gold, gawa sa silver. So, it is somehow a form of status. Napapakita mo kung anong status nila sa buhay. Okay, so the functions of arts are wide-ranging. Art is a broad, uh, is as broad as human experience. So, all of art comes out of life and is bound up with life. Art is meaningful but meaningful in ways that differ from society to society, from time to time, and from person to person. So, yun sabi ko na, we have different purposes preferences, we have different cultures, we have different beliefs, and we have different eras. So, iba-iba yung time natin. Iba-iba kasi yung trend. Araw-araw nag-iba ang trend. So, minsan bumabase din ang arts doon. Okay. So, with the uh, numerous listed functions of arts, they may normally fall into three categories as mentioned by Isa. These are personal, social and physical functions. So personal, ito yung self-expression. So an artist may create out of a need for self-expression. Okay. Or gratification. So she might have wanted to communicate a thought or point to the viewer. Okay. So sometimes ito yung sabi ko na uh, a piece might have been meant to merely entertain others and sometimes a piece isn't meant to have meaning at all. So, parang, yeah, for pastime, mga ganun. Hindi lang talaga siya uh, yung may mga reasons behind. Next. Uh, further, art may serve the personal functions of control. So, art has been used to attempt to exert magical control over time or the seasons of even acquisition of food. So, art is used to bring order to a messy and disorderly world. So, never underestimate the power of art. Kasi an artwork can change a society. Yung sinasabi ko nga kanina, it can change your perspectives. Next, conversely, art can be used to create chaos when an artist feels life is too state and ordinary. And art can also be therapeutic both for both artists and the viewers. Yun yung sabi ko ni kanina na an aid medication. Bakit? It is sometimes or most of the times uh, therapeutic. Next, social function. Uh, so according to uh, Ortiz, art performs a social function when it seeks or tends to influence the collective behavior of people. So it is created to be seen or to or used primarily in public situations. It expresses or describes social or collective aspects of existence as opposed to individual and personal kinds. So yun yung mga editorial cartoon, di ba? It is primarily for uh, public 
uh, appearance, di ba? Or uh, yung mga ating literature, yung mga pinapublish ng mga stories. So, nababasa ng public yun. So, it tends to influence. Kaya siya tinawag na social function. Kasi pwede na siyang maka sa society. Okay, next. Uh, influencing social behavior. So, pictorial form is very powerful means of putting across a message. So, yeah, one picture can have different stories. So, maraming ang naluloko sa mga stories eh. Parang, for example, ang sabi nila na uh, hindi porket Instagrammable life na yung nakikita nila sa mga pinopost mo, it doesn't mean na you have a perfect life. Parang ganun. So, pictorial form is very powerful. Kasi iba-iba yung message na napaparating. Iba-ibang judgments din ang na maparating niya. Okay. So, paintings, photographs, posters, cartoons have been used to express humanitarian concern as well as ideological or political comment. Yan sinasabi ko kanina. Next, satire. So, satire which puts a people and institutions to ridicule so that they will change. For example, yung mga editorial cartoon na nakakatawa. Uh, one example of that is yung pork battles come ni Janet Napolis noon, di ba nakikita nyo gumagamit sila ng mga pig yung mga yun. So, it is somewhat to ridicule a person so that they will change. Okay? So, it's effectively communicated in various cartoons and caricatures. Yung sinasabi ko kanina. Next, editorial cartoons tulad nung sa online kanina. Convey the message more directly and clearly than the printed word does. So, minsan kasi tamad na tayo magbasa eh. Uh, madali tayong, uh, madali makot yung attention natin sa drawing. So, ang ginagawa, yung purpose ng editorial cartoon is nandun na lahat yung meaning. So, hindi na natin kailangan basahin pa yung napakabaha, napakamahabang editorial uh, column na yan. With the use of the editorial cartoon, it conveys the message more directly and clearly. Next, Cartoonists comment on uh, weaknesses of society, of its leaders, with the hope that something is done to correct these faults and improve the human condition. Next, uh, literature. So, literature has served just as well for political and ideological expression. Uh, it is a powerful tool in shaping society and its manners. So, this is ko kanina na si Modesto de Castro is a uh, epistolary novel of 19th century and became the Filipino code of ethics of the time. So he guided the youth on how to conduct themselves in church, in social gatherings, in school, and at home. So yeah, literature can affect or can contribute to our morale. Okay. Next, we have propaganda literature. Propaganda literature has swayed people's mind and feelings toward uh, certain ends. So, yeah, yan yung mga nangyayari noong panahon nila, nila Rizal. Well, up to now, may mga propaganda pa rin. Next, we have religion. Religion has especially capitalized on the arts to spread beliefs and to reinforce and sustain faith. It plays noble functions as enlightening us in our spiritual beliefs and elevating our moral character. Next, advertising art aims to affect the buying behavior of people. So this includes posters, billboards, magazines, and newspaper ads, catalogs, handbills, and so on and so forth. So yan yung mga a simple poster can uh, can affect our behavior in buying. So, parang minsan nagiging hoarder tayo dahil nga sa mga posters na nakakakot ng attention natin. Next, we have display and celebration. Number one of that is commemoration of important personages in society. Serves to record important histor event, historical events or reveals the ideals of heroism. Yun yung ating mga National Heroes Day or sa America yung ginagamit nilang July 4th. Oh my God. Next, 
rituals. Rituals have played an important role in people's lives and have influenced the growth of certain arts as well. Okay. So, yan yung mga, sabi nga nila, the best way to understand the nature of art is to fully understand the connections to the ritual. Okay. So, noong unang panahon, talagang ang daming rituals. Okay. Parang after now, meron pa rin naman. Next, public celebrations. Any mga festivals and other activities unite people in a shared experience just as a celebration of important phase of life do. Okay, next, you have social description. So, very, ano naman to, self-explanatory lahat. Oh, artworks are vital historical documents. So, one example of that, artworks and photographs. So, yeah, historical documents yung mga yan. Yun nga sabi nila na, uh, collect as many pictures as you can. Kasi one day, you will look back and magugulat ka na lang, ala, ginawa ko pala to. Nangyari pala sa buhay ko to. So, in times na parang akala mo wala kang nararating sa buhay or parang walang kwenta yung buhay mo, through photographs, through pictures, ma-realize mo na ang dami mo na palang napagdaanan, ang dami mo ng events na na-enjoy. So, yeah, it will change your thinking then. Next, next. Tools, weapons, furniture, paintings, stages, stories, and so on and so forth. They reveal how people uh, thought, felt, and lived in a certain historical period. So, yun nga, sabi ko, uh, time affects art. Diba? So, yeah, it reveals kung kailan, anong, anong era siya nangyari. Next, temples, sculptures, epic plays, and even the pottery of ancient Greek tells us so much about the age when man first regarded himself as the me measure of all things. Okay, so portraits are also informative. Yeah, very important din na mga portraits na yan kasi one day, hindi naman tayo forever sa mundo. So, yeah, it will serve as information for us. Next, number three, physical. So, this one is the easiest to understand. Why? It is the work of art that are created to perform some service that have physical functions. Yung mga ginagamit natin, ito yung practical arts. Kung tawagin. So, yan yung mga tools and containers. So, yeah. So, let's move to this one. So, take a look at this, the given, given term. So, reflect why these are categorized this way. So, a spoon tool, a card tool, building container, community container, ceramic vase. Yeah, and so note that architecture, any of the crafts, and <clears throat> industrial design are all types of arts that have physical functions. So, architecture and mga houses, crafts and yung mga, yeah, yung mga ceramic vases, containers, building, I, um, Crafts are mga baskets and industrial design. We discussed ko na to last time. Okay. okay, so let's move to the, the last one. Okay, so this one is an example of the function of art. So, kung titignan mo, uh, chair, maganda yung appearance niya. So, sabi na dito, art that has a physical function usually relates to items that can be used for a practical purpose because of their physical structure despite their artistic appeal. So examples include architecture, which can be breathtaking, but still primarily serves as a physical function. So this chair is a good example of physical art. So its design means that it is immediately aesthetically interesting to the eye, but its main function is to be a comfortable chair to sit on. So, ganun ang physical art. Kahit may mga aesthetic purposes siya or maganda siyang uh, pleasing to the eye siya, its main purpose, its physical purpose is to serve as a service or gagamitin natin. So, yeah. That's the end of Unit 1. 
So, sana may natutunan kayo sa buong Unit 1. So, review, review, review because uh, baka may quiz na kayo soon. <laughs> okay, so, uh, yun kaya sabi ko kanina, one step at a time and organize your thoughts, organize your things and use your time wisely. Okay, so, Bye, everyone. See you sa next lesson. Take care. God bless.